Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is J.D. Brewer, owner and operator of Apex Welding. I met J.D. at Fabtech in Chicago last year and, and learned that we live about an hour from one another. So we've been, we've been working together a little bit in his fab shop here. And hopefully going to do a little bit of on-site type videos too on the stuff that he does at different local factories and plants. But um, I've been doing a little dual shield flux core lately and J.D. just happens to use it a lot. And uh, so I want to bend his ear a little bit today and talk about the type of work that he does. And then in just a minute, we're going to go out in the shop and do some pipe welding. And we're going to do some TIG root and flux core fill, dual shield flux core fill pipe using this machine right here. But I, I got a question on YouTube. It's a recurring question. Well, why would, why would you use dual shield flux core in the first place over regular conventional bare wire MIG? Well... I love to use a dual shield flux core for the speed and the strength. I can trust it. With the hard wire, when you have that that non-fusion with the hard wire over the mill scale or whatever, I, you never know. You can't tell that until it breaks free. There is no question with dual shield flux core that that stuff's in there. And it is so fast. You you know it's in there. You don't have to do any manipulation. It, it's it's a fast, just steady pull. So uh, to me, it's just a quicker weld altogether. Yeah. I think there's a lot of misperceptions out there on dual shield flux core in that in that well, because in my experience, I've seen heavy heavy pipe supports, you mm -hmm. know, two, three, four, five, six inches thick, where it's hundreds of passes using mm -hmm. a dual shield flux core with a really big big power source, really large diameter wire. Yep. What we're talking about here, what you do is using this small portable machine. And uh, 035 mm -hmm. wire, Lincoln 71M wire. Yep. And but so you're not doing like the huge stuff, but it's still important. Work yes. mezzanines, work platforms, mezzanines, pipe, well, that like, kind of stuff. I fabbed I fabbed a big water tank. And so it's not not life threatening, but it's gonna have a lot of pressure. It's not the biggest thing. It was only quarter inch wall thickness. So I'm welding sheets of quarter inch plate together. So I have multiple welds, just long welds. And then I also have the uh, the vertical pieces. Well, MIG vertical on a flat surface is mm -hmm. is not good. Mm -hmm. By going 035, being able to run 035, I was welding the bottom seam and then I would just turn and just go right up. Then I don't have a start and stop in the mm -hmm. bottom corner, you know, where Which all the pressure is. potential for a leak. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then I can just turn and just go right up. Then I'm done. Mm -hmm. There, You don't have to double pass with most things. I mean, it's... It's in there, and you yeah. know it is. Just yeah. like a 7018, you know it's in there. Yeah, it's very similar to a 7018 puddle. Yeah, it's, it's you know, almost look. like it's inside out. We're going to go out and weld some pipe now. We're going to hook this up to 115 volt using the little power cable adapter thingy. And we're going to put a root and hot pass in on 115 TIG. And then we'll swap over and do some welding with dual shield flux core. Fill passes and cap on the pipe. All right, well, let's, let's, let's go do it. Pipe welding is no different than any other kind of welding. The key is preparation, prepping that joint, getting the right bevel angle, the right finish, removing mill scale, etc. That's the best 20 bucks you can spend right here, but... What brand is... Oh, yeah. That's just the Home Depot. $20. Wow. Probably 30 after the grinding rock, a little flap disc action to make it nice and smooth and where you can clean it with some acetone. A little flapper wheel on the inside. You got a nice joint ready for TIG welding right at 30 degree bevel. Now hand beveling uh, a joint like this takes somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes typically. And the folks at Rigid were nice enough to send out this beveling machine for us to try out. And so that's what we're doing today. We're giving a little try out here real quick before we start the welding here. And this little thing is, is pretty awesome. It's amazing at how little time it takes to, to bevel a joint. Now, by the time you, you put it up on the pipe till the time you get a six inch joint beveled like this, you know, maybe a minute or two, not much more than that anyway. The actual beveling time is somewhere around 45 seconds. And, uh, and that's keeping it like, you know, there, there are actually some little indicator lights that tell you if you're putting too much pressure on it or going too slow. And it keeps you going the right speed. But about 45 seconks in a 6-inch in a, in a 
pipe like this is beveled and it's accurate it's cleaned all it requires then is a little remote removal of coating from the inside and outside for TIG welding and that's about it if you're gonna stick weld then you know you just you, you would just set it to put a land on there and not worry about cleaning any of the uh, coating necessarily much it also does short nipples like this you know a two inch piece which would be good for you know training some welders getting somebody some practice before they went off to uh, take a welding test also does plate just by putting it in the the uh, attachment that goes in the tripod vise Except the only thing with plate is that you know you can't do all the way end to end. You got about a two inch piece on the end that you have to hand bevel, but pretty slick. All right, we're gonna hook up the TIG torch now to put the root pass in. Now, JD really likes the Milwaukee compartment organizer here to keep all his cups and stuff in there. Oh yeah. He carries this thing on the job site, so he needs to be able to throw it behind the truck seat, whatever, without worrying about things getting mixed up, and it keeps everything separated. I just ordered one myself on Amazon. All right, you see the hole cut in the pipe there. That's for a branch connection. We'll go over that in a future video. But but just to, a quick way to level that out is just laying a piece of pipe in it and then getting the whole run level, tapping it around, getting it leveled, and locking it down in the tripod vise. Then clamps it down. And then with this little other little flange wizard center finder tool, it's going to get a mark on the sort of like top dead center here. And he's going to get several marks on this pipe using this tool so that when he can, he's going to rotate this thing 180 degrees to fit up a 90 on the end of it. And that's how he works. He's going to get a mark here and then a mark 180 degrees across. And then that's going to give him a couple of marks that he can, you know, make sure it's, everything is cool before he welds the 90 on. A little extra Sharpie mark help find those little center punch holes. And now it's rotating the thing where that, that uh, saddle cut is onto the bottom. That's why you put the marks on here to start with. And the flange wizard is just a little more accurate than a lot of other tools like it. Now JD is using a Sumner Ultra Clamp pipe fit up tool here. It's part number 781150. I just went to Amazon and saw one for around $170. But in JD's words, how much does a helper cost time and time again to have hold a, a pipe fitting for you like this. And JD works by himself a lot, so he needs a lot of time-saving tools like this. All right, he's going to use another little flange wizard tool here. He really likes the flange wizard brand. This is called a pocket pro level. He just finds it to be a lot more accurate than your average everyday plastic torpedo level. And so getting that 90, uh, you know, right both ways is very important. So we're going to be running the root pass here on 115 volt and it's got this little twist lock pigtail thing in here adapter and we're going to set it over here to TIG and this little machine kind of walks you through the process and reminds you if you're screwing up make sure you're on the right polarity and all that stuff. We're going to start off around 85 amps and go from there. It's always good when you're using a fairly wide gap like this to start off a little low when you're tack welding and then kind of as you're tack welding you'll get a feel for are you close? Are you too hot? Are you too cold? It's better to be a little too cold than too hot. It's pretty close. I think we wound up turning it down just a little bit. Again, we got a 5.30 second gap using 1 8 rod. And that's just one way to do a root pass. This is just how JD does it. 5.30 second gap, lays that 1 8 in there just like this. Puts a little pressure on the rod, goes side to side, and it's pretty much foolproof if you're welding on top doing a rollout joint like this. Now, a lot of guys go a lot hotter with a with a slightly narrower gap and you know roll it out on a turntable, but this is just JD's method here. And occasionally with a feather edge, no land on it, it'll keyhole just a little bit like that right there, and you just push a little rod in there, a little pressure. If the rod comes out of the puddle, you just get it right back in there. And if you're on the top like this, gravity is your friend. And it'll 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 usually come out pretty good, even if even if your rod comes out of the puddle momentarily and you have to just stick it back in there, no big deal. Puts a root in there somewhat like this, pretty decent. And the hot pass, you usually want to uh, if you're if you're doing a root pass like that with a kind of a wide gap, you usually want to crank the amperage up 
you know, 10 to 20 amps for the hot pass. Now we're going over to flux core. 22 and a half volts, 310 inches per minute using 035 Lincoln 71M. Now sometimes JD goes right over the top of the root pass with the with the dual shield flux core. Just depends on how heavy the root pass is. If it's a really light root pass, you might put a hot pass in there. If it's a pretty heavy root pass, you might just go right on with the flux core. And you can usually go from 9 o'clock up to 12 o'clock or so and then roll it with no issues here, even if you're just going over the root pass. That's what that looks like. Nice and smooth, hardly any ripples. Very nice pass. That's nice. That's laying in there, man. Oh, yeah. So this pass is taking it out almost flush, which you want to do right before the cover pass. In, in this process or even stick welding is just be you want to be slightly below flush usually that leaves you in a good good shape to put a cover pass on there without putting excessive reinforcement on there so this is about a sixteenth below flush here so coming one more pass now makes it nice and easy to put a nice cover pass on there what JD is doing here is he's just weaving not spending a whole lot of time across the middle, just pausing briefly at the edges and just, just overlapping the bevel just a little bit to make sure that it's completely full. If you had a rollout wheel, you could, you know, never stop, go start to finish. And it, actually it looks a whole lot like a 7018 cover pass, but it's dual shield 71M. Well, before we let you go, I've got something that's been rolling around my head because J.D. and I both listened to a podcast that's uh, got Jimmy DiResta, Bob Claggett, and David Prosciutto mm -hmm. on it called Making It. We both listened to it, and, uh, and there was a question recently in there about if you had to start all over with nothing but $2,000, what would you buy? And that's a good, like, mental exercise. What would you buy? Would you buy... Uh, what welder would you buy if you were going to start a welding? If you were going to start a welding business, like completely start from scratch, you had to do it all over again. All you had was two thousand dollars. What would you buy? So I kind of have an idea on what I would buy. I'm curious as to what JD would buy. So how how far would that two thousand dollars go for you? What would you buy to get started after all the lessons learned and starting your own business a couple of times? I I've learned a couple of lessons. First thing I would buy was this machine. I know I can handle the full range of any kind of welding. I mean, it's a multi-purpose, does that, and it does it well. And um, the second thing I would buy would be a six-inch grinder. I like the Metabo grinders, bulletproof to me. And with the six-inch, the cutoff wheels, I mean, I can cut the pipe, yeah. weld the pipe. I cut can it, weld anything it, yeah. with this. I can cut any steel with that. I mean, those, they got those blades that, I mean, you can cut whatever you need to with mm -hmm. it. And then I'd probably shop around on Craigslist and get myself a, a rigid tri-stand. With a pipe vise in it. It says a pipe vise, but I mean, anything you need, square mm -hmm. tubing, angle, pipe, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that size vise is, it'll hold it. And yeah. it holds it solid too. So for uh, under $2,000, that's what I'd start with. This welder, six inch Metabo, and a rigid tri stand. I think that's what they call it. Okay. That's what I'd go with. <laughs> All right, well, JD, thanks for your time, as always, mm -hmm. and, and you'll be seeing more of JD in future videos. When he's got something interesting to do, I'll come on site and film it. All right, thanks for your time. We'll see you next time.